Hello, scholars. You're following along on your notes packet. I think this is the second page of the notes packet. And I think you just finished reading page 88 in your textbook, so that's where I am. We want to start to understand if we can find average rate of change of a function by finding the slope of a secant line as finding the slope between two points on the function, what would it mean to find the slope of the tangent to the function? So the tangent to the function, you can see some pictures on your in your notes handout. But a tangent line to a function sort of defies definition until you know a little bit more calculus. But I do want us to think about this. What if you right here, this tangent function, what if you graph that on your calculator and then zoomed in? You see what's going to happen? Of all the lines in the universe, the tangent line is the line that was going to match up most closely for the longest time to your function as you zoom in. So you would eventually, if you zoomed in and kept going, you would eventually be able to make it seem like your curve and your tangent line to the curve were a perfect match, an exact overlap. That's the tangent line to the function. So if we can understand that as the meaning of tangent line, watch what happens here. I'm at the next page in your book. I want you to come to this bottom corner here, this little picture in the margin. There's another copy of this picture in your notes paper. The slope of the tangent line, it's, it's what we're looking for in calculus because it can tell us how fast or at what rate a function is changing at an exact moment in time instead of over a time interval. So I want you to come to this picture. You see the secant line QP, PQ. Write in in your notes, what do you think the slope of that secant line is? If you can't read it here, you can look at the labeling of the points on your notes paper. So that expression you just wrote is called the difference quotient for f at a. I hope you can understand why, because it contains both a difference and a quotient. And expressions like this that look like a difference quotient show up all the time in calculus. So watch out for them, and they're going to be important for us. Now that you can write the slope of the secant line using the difference quotient, what could we do to actually find the slope of the function at a single point? Well, this is what we talked about when we talked about uh, instantaneous speed back in section 2.1. We'd pick Q so it's closer and closer and closer and closer to P until it was so close to P that there was essentially zero space between Q and P. So we have that definition on the next page. This is the this is the big deal for this section. The slope of a curve at a point, the slope of f of x at a comma f of a, is the limit as h approaches zero of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. Get this into your notes. It's critically critically important. It's going to definitely show up in the AP test. So it's probably becoming obvious why we spend so much time working on limits and how to take care of the zero over zero problem that we saw with limits. Because if we want to find the slope of a curve at a point, we're going to take this limit as h goes towards zero, and our denominator is always going to be h. So we're always going to have some kind of zero over zero problem that we're going to have to try to get rid of. So we'll review the three techniques that we've used before. Before we go on to use difference quotients, just quickly, two important algebra facts that we have to remember because they trip calculus students up. The first one is to remember to distribute the subtraction. So notice in the numerator, we've always got a subtraction problem. Um, make sure that whatever you're trying to subtract, whatever comes after the subtraction sign, gets parentheses, and then the subtraction gets distributed. And the second one is we spend a lot of time using polynomial functions in calculus. Make sure if you need to raise a polynomial to an exponent, first rewrite it as repeated multiplication. So if you want to square a binomial, make sure you write the binomial twice, and then if FOIL is what you remember, use FOIL. But notice that 4 minus x squared takes 4 multiplications.